in middle school, I never really had my balls drop. So let's just say getting a girlfriend wasn't really an option. The most God gave me when it came to puberty was a pubic stash that ended up being woman repellent. Anyways, I remember there was this one girl in our class I had a serious crush on. Like she was the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. I was so obsessed with her. I remember that I had my locker beside her. We sat beside each other in class. Hell, I remember even writing about her in my diary a journal. It's actually a journal. One day in class, I remember my teacher was saying how there was going to be a spring dance coming up. In my head, I was thinking about how badly I wanted to ask this girl out. If you want to hear the rest of this, like for part two. I wanted to ask my crush to the school dance, but to be honest, I had no idea how to. So I remember searching up how to ask a girl out on the internet. Let's just say it didn't help. And also a quick side note, I had a seriously bad stutter when I was growing up. The next day, I promised myself to ask her out on recess to the school dance. I had my favorite green Minecraft shirt on and was ready to ask her. But as I walked up to her, another guy that was a lacrosse player already started talking to her. Obviously, I started to tear up and put my head down and walk away. But then her friend walked up to me and said something that I was really shocked about. Her friend came up to me and said, you know, she wants you to ask her out, right? I looked at her in shock saying, why in the world would she want me to ask her out of all people? Then after that, she said, she told me she read your diary and she really likes how much you care about her. When she said that, my cheeks went red like the R in RGB. I started panicking and when I turned around to look at her, she was already looking at me, staring me down. In my head, I was thinking that this is my moment to ask out the girl of my dreams to the school dance. Then I walked up to her and I was staring at her with her amazing eyes. Full for part three. So as I was walking up to her, I remember her eyes were literally staring at me like there was no tomorrow. And when I walked up in front of her, I was super, super nervous. But at the same time, though, she was expecting me to ask her. So I kind of just went with the flow. Like I said before, in part one, I had a seriously bad stutter. So I remember me asking her kind of went like this. So, 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 do, do, do you want to go to the, the, the dance maybe with, with, with. Um, me? Then she looked at me and she started laughing and saying, about time you asked, dummy. Now, I'm not gonna lie. When she said that, I was the most happiest kid on the planet. Like, I remember literally right after she said yes, I turned around and threw my fist up in the air as if I was Ash from Pokemon. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for 100,000 followers. You guys are absolutely insane with these amazing, embarrassing stories. I seriously love you guys for it. And also, I am live in my bio right now if you guys want to come and join me and actually talk to me in person about these stories. Anyways, like I always say, follow for more embarrassing stories. Now, getting a girlfriend is definitely, I gotta say, one of the hardest things to do. But surprising enough, I actually ended up getting one. Back in high school, I remember I got my first car, and it was a Toyota Silica GT, and I love that thing to death. Now, I remember me and a friend that we're gonna call Crow, we went out driving together, and I remember he had a date that day, and we went shopping for new clothes. But as we were shopping, I remember Crow got a phone call from this girl, and she said, Hey, I'm bringing a friend. Is that cool? Now, obviously, I don't think anyone really wants to be a third wheel nowadays, but I remember my friend muting his phone and saying, Bubba, you're coming with me. And I remember saying, well, I mean, if the girl's good with it, then I guess I'll go. Obviously, they started talking and then eventually, for some reason, the girl or her friend was good with it. Now, reminder, me and this girl have never seen each other nor know each other. So me and Crow got ready. We got in our cars. And when we got there, the most craziest thing happened. Full for part two. Now, before I continue on with the story, quick reminder, Crow had some really ugly car that was a Toyota Echo and I had a Toyota Silica. And putting those cars side by side, it was pretty obvious mine was the better one. Now, when we got there, I remember seeing Crow's date and Crow's date looked hot. Don't get me wrong. But when I saw her friend, holy cow, I remember my eyes widening and I remember staring at this girl because she had the most beautiful smile. She was outstanding. She had the cutest face in the world. Like I haven't felt this way since middle school. I remember regaining my stutter after she said hi to me because let's just say I got really nervous. Anyways, when we were getting to leave, I remember Crow's date wanted to go into my car because my car looked nicer. But to be honest, let's just say me and this other girl didn't really want her to join us. So she ended up going with Crow anyway, because I remember this girl that I was supposed to go out with literally stared her down saying no. Anyways, we drove to the theater and let's just say I made the most boldest move I ever made. Full for part three. Now, when we got to the theater, I remember we went to go see the Avengers Endgame. But if I'm being totally honest, I don't really remember what happens in it, because let's just say when you have a hot chick sitting beside you in a theater, you're not really going to focus on the movie. Anyways, I kept looking at her and we kept doing like, you know, cute conversation. And then I remember her friend looking at me saying, did you just kiss her? Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't practice kissing my pillow that day, so let's just say my kissing game wasn't on point. And then for some reason, and don't ever do this, but I remember asking her, can I kiss you? Anyways, I counted down from three, I leaned in, and let's just say I did end up kissing her. Anyways, while we were making out during Endgame, I remember Crow and his girl weren't really doing anything. They were just sitting there awkwardly staring at us. Let's just say things didn't work out for them. Anyways, I drove her home, and let's just say the rest is history. We ended up dating, and 
That's it. Fall for more embarrassing stories. I remember when I was a kid, getting your first kiss was like a natural thing to already have. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, people in middle school were losing their V cards. So a first kiss was kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Anyways, I remember one time in school, we had to do a school play on the, this book called Romeo and Juliet that we did a book report on. And I remember when we were getting assigned the roles of what role we had in Romeo and Juliet, I got assigned Romeo. And let's just say this really, really gross looking girl, not to be mean, but she was not the prettiest, was Juliet. Anyways, I remember our first rehearsal when we actually went through the script. I remember the teacher ended up saying, time to rehearse the kissing scene. And when she said that, my heart literally stopped. The girl ended up staring at me with a crooked smile and she stared at me with her crazy eyes. And let's just say I regretted going to school that day. Fall for part two. As the girl was looking at me and the teacher was saying, it's time to rehearse the kissing scene. I remember freaking out. Like I want to get out of there so bad. But right when I thought about leaving, she instantly grabbed me by the shoulders and gave me a disgusting wet kiss that made me want to puke. Like, I literally felt like I was eating a baby wipe. When she let go, I remember wiping my mouth grossed out. It's crazy how in the movies, kissing scenes are supposed to be like super romantic, like in the notebook, but I guess mine just wasn't like that. After rehearsal, I remember I was walking down the hallway while everybody was staring at me since I just kissed this girl. And then the craziest thing happened where she walked up to me and said, meet me under the staircase after school. And what happens next literally felt illegal. Fall for part three. When she said she wanted to meet me under the staircase, I said yes because everyone was already staring at me. Like, I literally felt peer pressured to go there. So after school, I ended up going to the staircase that she told me to go to. And when I got to the staircase, I remember seeing her under it with her backpack between her legs as if she was gonna, like, commit a crime. When I sat down beside her, I remember she told me, I really enjoyed her kiss, Baba. And I was panicking because she was leaning over towards me. And I remember saying, listen, I, I think you're cool, but... And in Instantly, right at that moment, she started grabbing my shoulders and kissing me again. Except this time, she wouldn't let go. So I remember literally pushing her off me and running to the nearest bathroom, washing my mouth out with soap because I wanted to get the taste of mayonnaise out of my mouth. I guess she had a mayonnaise sandwich or something. And I remember not going to school for like the next two days just to make sure I wouldn't see her again. Anyways, like I always say, fall for more embarrassing stories. I remember when I was a kid, I never really understood how bad the N-word was to say. Like in middle school, I actually didn't like understand the origin or where like it all generally came from and stuff like i always heard it in like songs and things but i never actually like understood like the full-on history behind it which if you don't know you should know anyways we had a person that came into our school to show us how rapping would be fun and really cool it was some chick who did soundcloud and apparently was making change with her music where have i heard that before anyways she came in and she started like rapping and basically like you know showing us how to be the change and i remember she started pointing at kids in the audience to come up and of course she decided to point at me after pointing at like three other different kids and when i went up there let's just say things went for the worst fall for part two when i went up there i remember i was like really confused on what to say and i remember i saw my middle school crush sitting at the bleachers just staring me down as if i was gonna do something amazing like i wasn't doing one of those videos where you know it's like the quiet kid ends up being the best rapper where like i think we've all seen those before but anyways i remember i was sitting there all nervous and freaking out and i remember i was straight up like my name's a rash i like the cash and i take your girl and dash yeah i don't know i wasn't that creative i'm gonna be brutally honest with you but anyways right after i went up i remember i went back and sat down and i was like all freaking out and stuff like i was thinking how dumb i was doing that but then the rapper lady that was on the stage teaching us how to be the change decides to point at a certain person that let's just say actually was like a wannabe soundcloud rapper and this is where things went very racist fall for part three when the lady pointed at the student that was a wannabe soundcloud rapper let's just say he went on that stage as confident as anyone else was he went up there and straight up started rapping and saying things that were let's just say not pg like he straight up said all my are going to die and they're going to face my and let's just say he full-on just said the n-word live on stage in front of the whole school i remember seeing teachers freaking out and panicking not knowing what to do and the person who was like hosting the assembly the rapper lady wannabe or whatever she took the microphone from him and literally did a whole speech on how it's not right to 
basically say racial slurs in songs. Wow, what a big change from nowadays, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, that form of embarrassment is always the weirdest thing. Basically, just always make sure you know what to say before you say it out loud. And fall for more embarrassing stories. I remember when I was in high school, doing the devil's tango was like a really popular thing. Like there was no kid who hasn't really done it yet, unless you know, you were a nun at that point. Anyways, I remember I wanted to go to the bathroom because I was in math class and I wanted to get out of there super badly. So I remember I walked up to my teacher saying, hey, my stomach hurts. Can I go to the bathroom? And obviously she said, yeah, just make it quick. So I went straight to the bathroom and when I got there, I instantly sat on my phone and started watching Jack Septicai. I think all of us know who that is. And as I was watching him, I realized 10 minutes later that a girl walked in and I was really weirded out and I was thinking what the heck's going on? But then I saw her boyfriend walk in and instantly they started making out like there was no tomorrow. And what they did literally made me want to puke. Fall for part two. So I remember when this girl and the guy walked into the bathroom, I was really weirded out and I saw them making out with each other like nonstop. And it got to the point where I was thinking I should just leave. But as I was about to stand up and leave, I instantly see them go into the stall right next to me. And the girl instantly went on her knees. That's right, her literal knees. And at that point, I already knew what was going down. They were doing the devil's tango. And I was super weirded out. But then as I was sitting there and thinking, okay, I'm gonna leave, like that's it, I'm leaving. Another person decided to walk in and it was a kid from our leadership club. And this kid was like a goody two shoes, okay? Like this was not a good sign for him. And he instantly started freaking out and yelling as if he never saw anyone do the devil's tango before. And what ended up happening to him was the most craziest thing. Fall for part three. So as this guy started freaking out that this couple was doing the devil's tango in the high school bathroom instantly at that moment i saw an opportunity to leave but as i was about to leave and run out of there as quick as possible i remember seeing through the crack of the bathroom stall and seeing this guy seeing the boyfriend walk out of there and started pulling his pants up and beating the crap out of this kid like this kid was getting beat to the ground and at that moment i decided to go on my belly and escape from going under the stall but let's just say a teacher walked in and at that moment we all got sent to the office and let's just say we all got suspended moral of the story is if you're gonna do it in the bathroom at least do it when it's like an assembly or something don't just do it when everyone's gonna be there anyways fall for more embarrassing stories this is the true story of the nutcracker we've all heard of this story some might have even gone to see it live but the true story is very horrifying it starts with a young girl named marie she receives a nutcracker for christmas which her brother breaks trying to crack a particularly large nut she patches the doll up with some ribbon from her dress until her clockmaker godfather can properly fix it up that night while everyone's asleep marie sneaks back downstairs to be with the nutcracker but as the clock strikes midnight things go from a mildly creepy doll obsession to a full-blown horror movie rats pile up into the house from nowhere led by the seven-headed mouse king yeah a mouse with seven heads then marie herself is shrunken into a mouse size it gets crazier like for part two this is the true story of the nutcracker part two okay so boom like i said marie herself shrunk into a mouse's size after rats piled up everywhere led by a seven-headed mouse king but lucky for marie the other dolls which were soldiers sprang to life and started battling the rats and the soldiers are led by none other than the nutcracker it doesn't go too well for the dolls until marie takes off her slipper and chucks it at the mouse king distracting him long enough for the nutcracker to kill him marie passed out and when she wakes up normal sized the room is a complete mess and there are seven tiny crowns scattered around her years later marie professes her love for the nutcracker and that night finds herself doll size again but this time it's permanent and she spends the the rest of her life living with the nutcracker story time on how my uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday okay y'all so today's story is my own and thank you guys for 1 million followers all right y'all let's get into it okay so boom about two years ago in 2019 i lived by myself in my own apartment at this time, I was at the end of my lease and I was actually moving to another apartment. I had to do everything by myself because I had nobody to help me, so I had to go get a U-Haul truck. This was my first time using Uber because I have my own car. 
But to get to U-Haul, I had to Uber over there so I could get the truck and then go from apartment to apartment. My first Uber driver bringing me to the U-Haul truck was fine. I had no issues with him and it was pretty normal and fast. So once I was done with the U-Haul truck and I was done moving, I had to return the truck to its location. And then I had to Uber back to my apartment where my car was. Now this second Uber driver, this is where the issue comes in. Y'all, it was literally crazy. My life was at stake. Life for part two. Part two on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, I returned my U-Haul truck and I waited for my Uber driver to come pick me up. When my Uber driver came to pick me up, right from the beginning, I knew something was off about him. Always trust your instincts. He was a little weird and off, but I told myself that it's only a 10 minute drive and it will be over soon. So I sat on the back of the car and I just stayed on my phone, you know, minding my business. And then the guy just started talking to me like I guess he was trying to have small talk. But the weird thing is I couldn't understand what he was saying. And I got footage, you guys, listen to this. Yeah, I didn't know what he was saying, but I just thought he wanted to do small talk. So I just was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, ooh, ah. But then all of a sudden, he went off the path of my route. I was like, um, excuse me, you took the wrong turn. Then he turned back and looked at me and said, I think we're going exactly where we need to be. It gets worse. Like for part three, part three on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, he went off the path of my route. And I said, um, excuse me, you made the wrong turn. Then he turned around and looked at me and said, I think we're going exactly where we need to be. I still didn't get it and I looked confused and I was just like, just drop me off at this gas station here. And chow, he locked the door. At that moment, my heart sank and I knew exactly what was going on. I was being kidnapped on my birthday. He locked all the doors and put child lock so I wouldn't be able to unlock and leave either. I was under pressure, but I knew I had to think fast and get out of this situation. Y'all, he was driving fast, but thank God he wasn't on a highway, so there was red lights. And I live in Miami, so traffic hour is real. I knew that once he stopped at a red light, that that would be my only chance to get the hell out this car. So here we go. We stopped at the red light, and I took his head and bashed it into his steering wheel. He didn't see it coming, so I did it pretty easy. Running out of time, like for part four. Story time on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize realize it okay so boom my mom and my dad had been together for 14 years up until this point and my mom was actually pregnant with my soon-to-be little sister my mom and my dad almost never argued they had a pretty solid relationship or so i thought and my mom was very close to her twin sister for obvious reasons i mean they're twins well one day when my parents was at work i decided to skip school with my friends and go to the movie theaters instead but i needed some money so i was planning on going home to get money out of my mom's purse since she never noticed when i took anything I assumed the house was empty because I was usually the first one home, then my mom, then my dad. Remember that because that's important for later on in the story. Y'all, I ran into the house and I went straight for my parents' room. I mean, I was loud. I didn't hear any moaning, y'all. Guess he was doing a bad job. But anyways, I opened that door and there it was. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I opened the door into the room and there it was. My dad and my mom's sister literally staring at me in shock. I closed that door so fast and ran to my room, I didn't even give him a chance to react. Y'all, I didn't even realize that wasn't my mom. Don't worry though, because I eventually did. Stick with me. But yeah, I was panicking on how I was going to explain why I skipped school and that I just walked in on them. I was waiting for them to come talk to me but they never did about four hours later my real mom came home and screamed that she got food for us now remember what i said i'm usually the first home then my mom then my dad so my mom only bought food for me and her assuming that her husband wasn't gonna be home till later so anyways i went downstairs and told my mom sorry about earlier she was confused and said what happened earlier and this is when it got real y'all life for part three Part three on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I told my mom I'm sorry about what happened earlier, and she said, what happened earlier? Y'all, my stupid ass, I really thought that was my mom's way of trying to act like nothing ever happened. So I just laughed. But then I said, where's dad's food? Then my mom said, you know he doesn't come home from work till later, so the food was spoiled by then. Y'all, at that very moment, it hit me. I realized that when I opened the door for that split second, I didn't see my mom have a pregnant belly. So out of nowhere, I made that, oh my gosh, I just realized something noise. You know that noise. It goes like this. <gasps> So my mom's still confused, asking, what's wrong? I said, mom, were you here earlier? She said, of course not, honey. I was at work the whole day. I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. 
My mom immediately stopped eating. Like for part four. Part four on how I caught my dad cheating on my mom with her twin sister, and I didn't even realize it. So like I said, I screamed, oh my gosh, mom, dad is cheating on you with Lily. Then my mom immediately stopped eating. My mom looked at me so serious and said, what are you talking about? Then I explained everything to her the anger my mom had is just something i can't explain let me remind you that my mom is pregnant and she's finding out that her husband is cheating on her with her twin sister while pregnant and she's finding out by her daughter my dad was a dead man once he came home his life fell apart he cried and begged my mom not to leave him but nope she divorced him and took him for everything he got might i add my mom couldn't even look at her sister so their relationship was never the same and it doesn't help that my mom slept with her boyfriend a year later my mom is pet at tea i still got to see my dad but i always have that scene in the back of my head but hey i never got in trouble for ditching school so it all worked out <laughs> story time on how i cheated on my husband with his son okay so boom let's get right into it so i met my husband at my job where we quickly fell in love got married and the rest is history my husband had a child from a previous relationship who was 17 years old by the way i'm 27 and my husband is 34. my husband was really great at his job but he started treating me really bad he was always working and had me stay home because he wanted to be the provider he also bought food for me when i was hungry since i don't cook but sometimes it would just be food that i didn't want before he leaves he kisses me and makes breakfast for the house as if that's going to make anything better and only spends time with me on his one day off it's ridiculous well i started spending a lot more time with my stepson and we became really close i started feeling something real between us and my husband was being horrible so i made my move like for part part two on how i lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child okay so boom like i said after i found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend for over a year i ended up having a one night stand with his best friend because i wanted revenge i was being spiteful and doing tit for tat I felt horrible about it and me and his best friend decided not to tell anyone. Well, I got pregnant and without him knowing, I had a DNA test done on my boyfriend. He is not the father. And the only other person I slept with was his best friend. I really feel horrible, but seven years later, my now husband still thinks my seven-year-old son is his. Am I the asshole for not telling him even though he cheated on me first? Story time on how I hid in my boyfriend's closet and watched him get nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, I'ma jump right into this one. So me and my boyfriend been together for one year and my best friend was the one who got us together. In the beginning, me and my boyfriend were in the honeymoon stage and I couldn't get enough of him child and meanwhile my best friend was hating and started to get jealous she started giving me attitude when I would call her she started avoiding me when I would ask to go out and she started to text me way less so I took it as her trying to distance herself from me I cried to her telling her she's my best friend and I don't want to lose her then we got back to being okay fast forward a couple months to the stage me and my boyfriend relationship is at now yeah now he's acting funny he's not talking to me as much he's always distracted on his phone when i'm with him and he started making excuses on why i almost never see him well i'm crazy and i was going to find out exactly what's going on so i took his keys like for part two part two on how i hid in my boyfriend's closet and watched him get nasty with my best friend okay so boom like i said i'm crazy and my boyfriend was acting funny, so I was going to get to the bottom of things. My boyfriend gave me spare keys to his apartment in the beginning of our relationship. You know, when we was in the honeymoon stage. I never used it because he always was home and he always opened the door for me. So he kind of forgot I had it, but I sure didn't. So this day, I let myself in. I wanted to see exactly why today he couldn't see me. So I went up to his room and I just hid in the closet about an hour later he came home with company they didn't even watch a movie first they immediately came to his room i was peeking through the little closet space and my jaws dropped when i seen it was my best friend they undressed each other and he slammed her on the bed y'all wouldn't believe what happened next like for part three 